Look at this poster we had made up. It's a possibility. It's a real thing. Speaker Hakeem Jeffries. Look, we're one vote. Conservatives have a one vote. Republicans, shouldn't say conservatives because there are a lot of non-conservative Republicans, but a one vote majority now in the House of Representatives. Um, Speaker Johnson barely hanging on. Someone just called for his ouster today. More on that in a moment. Uh, but a one vote majority. Remember uh, George Santos? You know, nobody proved anything about George Santos yet in a court of law. But they chased him out of Congress, and he wanted to serve, and he was a reliably conservative vote. Who else is leaving? Uh, Ken Buck, Republican, so-called Republican of uh, Colorado. Yeah, last day in Congress today. Word is he really wants to go work at CNN. And now we just found out that Congressman Mike Gallagher, Republican of Wisconsin, will be leaving office on the 19th of April and that means his seat will remain vacant under Wisconsin law. They could have had a special election. There was a chance for a Republican to possibly fill that seat. Now it's not gonna happen. It will remain vacant. And a lot of people are wondering, what is up with Mike Gallagher? Seem to have all that promise. Now, one thing first, how long is the term for a congressman, a member of Congress? It's two years. And it started on January 1st of 2023. And it doesn't expire until January 1st of 2025. These people are leaving before. You know, they all made these big promises. I will fight for you. I will serve. And now they're running away. That makes Mike Johnson even more vulnerable. Now, uh, I like him. I'm not a member of Congress. I don't know the inner workings of that institution. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Republican of Georgia, who I also like, surprised a lot of people when she said this today. She wants Mike Johnson to leave. She feels betrayed, let down. Today I filed a motion to vacate after Speaker Johnson has betrayed our conference and broken our rules. Uh, we were promised promise regular order. Uh, that's what our conference had started out as uh, with rules and promises to the American people that we would bring regular order back to Congress. Uh, Speaker Johnson has betrayed that by passing three CRs. We had one day basically to read 1,012 pages, breaking the 72-hour rule. Uh, this is a betrayal of the American people. Wow. Look, even if they got three days, they were going to read those 1,000 pages. Uh, it's not the way it works there. I don't know really what to make of this. Again, I like Speaker Johnson. I like Marjorie Taylor Greene. I also like Clay Higgins. No one's been better on January 6th than him. Republican of Louisiana, I think his opinion here um, is an important one. I consider Marjorie Taylor Greene to be my friend. She's still my friend, but she just made a big mistake. You know, trying to vacate Mike Johnson's I totally oppose that. Listen, Mike is a very good man. He begins every day from the right place. He's deeply principled. And he's like he's like a brother to me. And to think that that one of our Republican colleagues would 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 call for his ouster right now, it's it's, it's really it's abhorrent to me. And I oppose it. I stand with Mike Johnson. All right, that says a lot. Clay Higgins, uh, I, I think that's where uh, we ought to be right now. Just throwing the party into turmoil again, the Kevin McCarthy thing. And I know Kevin really let us down at times. He quit Congress to go make uh, some big money. Who else is quitting jobs that they are ostensibly serving people, but now they're going to do something else? Ronna Romney McDaniel, her last day on the job was, uh, I think, this week. Guess where she's going? MSNBC. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> she's going to work there. How about that? Ronna Romney McDaniel. Yeah, I think she's the niece or something like that. We should put Romney in the middle there. Uh, I don't know. I don't get it. This is Senator Robert Menendez. No one is hounding this guy out of Congress. He's going to serve out. He may even run for re-election and win. Meanwhile, the, the third day uh, Santos is in office, the entire National Press Corps is giving him a hard time about lying about being on the college volleyball team. It's totally crazy. This is a, I think the Democrats got to have a hand in this in pushing these Republicans out, encouraging them to leave. But the Mike Gallagher thing, Republican of Wisconsin, that's a bit of a mystery. 
you know, people look at this guy and think, well, handsome guy, veteran, smart, got a big future, could be president someday, but he's leaving. And the way he's leaving on April 19th means the seat's going to be vacant. I don't know. I don't know about this guy at all now. Used to like him. Maybe he was in it like a lot of Congress people and people in politics for the ego pay. Hard work, service, doing your part. I was raised on these Wisconsin values and I learned to live them in the Marines. I'm Mike Gallagher. I approve this message because I'm running for this community, a place that taught me to help those who struggle. I'm running for this country to keep it safe and strong because after seven years in the Marines, two tours in Iraq, I can't sit on the sidelines. I'm Mike Gallagher and I'm running for Congress. Can't sit on the sidelines except for the last third of his term. Just not going to be in the game anymore. I think it is a lot of ego for these guys. What other, you know, actors and TV shows and movies, I can see them running and taking a film of them, but a um, member of Congress, it's a little bit weird, right? This is also kind of weird. I think he's modeling for, I don't know, a future coin that he sees himself on. In Northeast Wisconsin, our heritage runs deep. As a kid, nothing was better than being out on the bay. I'm Mike Gallagher. I approve this message to preserve this treasure for our kids. That's why I'm bringing Wisconsinites together, finding common sense, local solutions to ensure clean, healthy water. It's our duty to pass on our heritage to the next generation, because these waters run deep within all of us. Wisconsin's Mike Gallagher. What do you think, huh? Wow, I want to send that guy to Congress. He looks so determined and impressive, except for the last eight months of his term. What about your kid? What about the kids, Mike? I don't know. I think a lot of these guys are in it for the wrong reason. You know who was, I have to say, I think he was in it for all the right reasons. And of course, Congress, they threw him out so fast is that George Santos guy. He didn't want to leave. He wouldn't have quit with eight months left. Tell us, George. I came here to do work. I came here to pass and work on conservative legislation. I have a stellar conservative record that I am proud of. The work I've done in this body, I am proud of. The votes I've taken in this body, I am proud of. Every vote that I've taken that might have been against leadership, I stand by those votes. Not because I disrespect leadership, but because I want a more conservative agenda for our country. Wow. And now he's gone, and uh, the Republican majority is hanging on by a thread. He would have stayed. He tried to fight. What did Mike Gallagher do? Kind of did what he, how he came in. Running. Running away this time, though. I don't like it. Good luck in the private sector, I guess. Uh, maybe we'll get the whole story at some point. I think he has a lot of talent. I'm sorry that he's uh, leaving this way. All right, next, please. Trouble. You heard about the terrorist attack in Moscow, right? Here's the outside of that theater. Uh, a bunch of ISIS gunmen, ISIS is claiming responsibility. Uh, they shot up the theater, killed at least 40 people. Let's go inside now. And uh, really shocking stuff. Turn up the volume, please. All right. Uh, just horrible. And here, I, yeah, the, the death toll hasn't changed. Let's uh, put it up. I think it's we're at 40 and more than 100 injured. ISIS claiming responsibility, still kind of investigating. But, you know, it would be a good thing right now uh, for us to be on the phone with our counterparts in Russia. That's really hard to do after Joe Biden was, number one, sized up by Vladimir Putin as a weakling. That's one of the reasons why he invaded Ukraine. And because of the way Joe has talked about Putin, which, you know, may play to certain people, but it limits our options as a country. Check this out. When President Putin ordered his tanks to roll into Ukraine, he thought we would roll over. He was wrong. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. All right, so it would be really helpful for the United States to be on the phone in an effective way with Russia right now to find out what happened, and could it happen here? 
but because he said things like that, uh, we don't have that kind of relationship. Trump has that kind of relationship. I knew Putin, I know him very well. Fortunately, I knew Putin very well, and we had a little bit of a, a relationship. Getting along with Putin and Russia is a great thing. It actually is, and it gives America more options, and it just might help bring peace between Ukraine and Russia. This is the only war I can think of where nobody ever talked about peace negotiations, right? Vietnam, World War, I mean, you gotta have peace discussions, and President Trump is the only one bringing that up. Mr. President, can I just follow up on that, because that's a really important excuse statement me, let me that just you just made up. there. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying, Russians and Ukrainians. I want them to stop dying. What an interesting, novel idea. I'd like there to be less dying as well. Have we heard from President Biden? A lot going on in the news. And as usual, well, it's Friday. I think he might be on his way to Delaware. Not sure, but not particularly vocal uh, about much of anything these days. You saw what happened at the border yesterday. My God, this looked like a third world country. More and more. We are sliding. We are losing our superpower status. You heard about the bloodbath uh, fake news about Donald Trump. He addressed that today, and he has before, but I think the bloodbath applies to what we're seeing right here, and he agrees. While I was speaking metaphorically, a real bloodbath is occurring right now under Crooked Joe. It's Biden's border bloodbath. There's never been anything like it. Totally. And that issue, even Democrats are recognizing. He just might be the only one in the country who can fix it.